Good morning, happy Sabbath. Let's have a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are very grateful for your mercies towards us, for bringing us together this Sabbath uh, safely from the many places where we live. Thank you for giving us safe traveling mercies and bringing us together to hear your word. Please help us to learn something today and to apply it to our lives and guide us, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to begin with the scripture reading. Um, this message is meant to be interactive, and so we have a mic runner. I have nine questions, and so we'll be running through, we'll be running through them. And let's begin in the scripture reading, Isaiah 55, 6 through 7. And when you're there, please say amen. Isaiah 55, 6 through 7. And it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon so the first thing we are going to determine is what are we to seek? So we're going to be referring back to this verse often throughout the study. So let's make sure we, re re we remember this. So it mentioned, seek ye the Lord. But also, I like that it mentioned, let the wicked forsake his way. So we are going to be looking more in depth um, in the way seeking God's way. So let's go to Deuteronomy 11:22. Can I get a reader for that? Deuteronomy 11 verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 22 states, "For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you, to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. So Just did you 22. see the two things, the, the keeping the commandments and then the walking in the ways? So those are important. So with the scripture reading, let the wicked forsake his way, this automatically shows if there's a wicked way you have to forsake, there's a righteous way to turn to. And so... We're going to be looking at the righteous way we need to turn to, but it takes um, action on our part of forsaking a wicked way. So there's a lot of there's a lot of um, words that are synonymous. There's the walking, which we know can be equated to doing, and then there's the precepts and commands, which are God's commandments. And so this this verse basically says to keep the commandments by walking in his ways, that is keeping God's commandments. So we are to seek God's will and that is in his commandments. So now we're gonna look at the how to seek God. Uh, let's go to Second Chronicles 7.14 and I'll get another reader for that. And if at any time you have a comment, just um, raise your hand and we'll, the mic runner will come. So that was, that was Second Chronicles 7.14. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. So... Before you move, um, did you notice, did you catch the four things in that verse? It was in the beginning. It was, yes, it was humbling, it was pray, seeking his, seeking face, his face, and turning, and from, turning your wicked from wicked ways. ways. So these are four essential things. I also like how God doesn't just put his commands, but he puts what he will do when you do your part. And that is, he says he will hear you from heaven, he'll forgive your sin, and heal your land. So this is a great promise. God doesn't just have what we should do, but he gives us the promise of what he, he will do when we do our part. And so when we turn from our wicked ways, 
then God can forgive us. It takes a turning away first, a turning from what we think is um, the best the best path, and we have to turn to God's ways, and then he can forgive us. So if we are unwilling to turn from our own ways, that shows that we don't really want God's forgiveness. So let us make sure we don't make this mistake, because God is infinite, he's all-knowing, and so we should trust him. I want to make a comment, too. It seems like a lot of people confuse repentance with confession Mm -hmm. of sin. So saying you're sorry, and I say this all the time in the household, to apologize is not enough. You have to show uh, fruit of repentance. You know, you have to, they, just saying, sorry, God, I help me not to do that again, but showing effort. When human effort meets divine power, that is success. And so confession, there's another step. But a lot of times confessing seems like that's one part. But then the step further is the forsaking or putting off those ways. Amen. We know the verse, um, faith without works is dead. So you, if you repent and just, as you said, say you're sorry, it also takes a turning away because it's not true repentance without a forsaking of sin. So amen. I'm glad you brought that up. So if there's no more comments, we will move on to question three. And this one's kind of a trick question. It's what strength do we have to change? Does anyone have um, any thoughts? What strength do we have to change? What strength do we have to seek God's will and forsake our own? Does anyone have any, any thoughts? Yes, what strength do we have to change? So this is a well-known verse, Matthew 19, 26. Let's turn there together. Matthew 19, 26. It reads, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So this goes back to what you were saying, how it takes divine, divine strength and human effort, and those combined will will make all things possible. Man alone, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Another one, I really like this, it's Romans 7, 18. Paul, this is Paul speaking, Romans 7, 18. Um, Can I get a reader for that, Romans 7, 18? It says, for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Amen. So remember we were talking about the humility? I think this is a great example of Paul showing his humility, how he, he knows he even wants to do good. He, the will is in him. He wants it, the desire. But to do it, he, can, he can't do it in his own strength. We need to understand that we are totally dependent upon God. And when we understand that, we will, that will get rid of our pride so that we can see our need of God. Because if you, if you are not needy, then God doesn't have to help you. If you have it in your own strength, he will allow you to fail and do it in your own will. So, yes, this is a very important, um, a very important verse. So now let's look at the evidence we do have that we can do God's will and that we can overcome. Uh, this is another well-known verse, Philippians 4.13. Let's all go to Philippians 4.13. And can I get a reader for that? Could you repeat one more time, Philippians oh, 4? Philippians 4.13. Okay. I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. Amen. So in this verse, it says, I can do all things through Christ. So have we ever thought about what it means through Christ? Through what about Christ? So I found three things uh, about Christ's life and his death and his resurrection. And so we're going to go through it. First is his example. He showed us how to do it through his life. And so let's turn, let's turn to John 1.1. 1, 1. Actually, no, let's go to John 13, 15 first. John 13, 15. I'll read this. John 13, 15 says, 
For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done. So this is Jesus talking to his disciples when he washed their feet. He, he gave his whole life was an example um, for us to follow. And so in John 1.1, 1, 1, let's turn to John 1.1. 1, 1. Um, this was an extra piece I found in my, um, in, it took further study to find this, and I think it was very um, helpful. So John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we said that his example through Jesus' life is, is what he showed of how to do it, or how to do his will, how to do God's will. So this verse says that the word was God and the word was with God. So this shows and this proves that God and, his, and the word are synonymous and that his example and his life is recorded in the Bible. And so if Jesus is to be our standard and his, his life is recorded in the word, that is our standard of what we should follow. So not only is his example through his life, but it's in the, in the Bible because he lived his life through the, through the Bible, and it, that's where it's recorded. So another great verse that I'd like to bring in is Psalms 119, 104 through 105. Psalms 119, 104 through 105. Can I get a reader for that? This goes with John 1, 1. Psalms chapter 119, verse 104 and 105 says, Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. So this shows that the word is to be our example and our light, and that is given through Christ's example, his life. He is the word, and he is our standard, as the Bible is our standard. So the second thing that gives us evidence that we can overcome is through his sacrifice, through his sin, through his um, atonement for a sin that makes it possible to overcome. So this is a very well-known verse, Isaiah 53, 5. I won't have you go there, but Isaiah 53, 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So his, his death covers for our sins, but we know that we still have a part to do of forsaking the way. His death is, makes it possible, but it takes human cooperation. So, and that also, is um, that's made that's made clear through him even giving us example. He wouldn't give us an example if we're not to follow it. So through his death, we can we can have it be made possible. And through his example, he showed us how to do it. And then the third thing is he gives us power, and that's through his Holy Spirit, which is through his presence. So can I get a reader for John sixteen thirteen? John sixteen thirteen. You said John sixteen thirteen? Yes. John sixteen thirteen. How be it when he the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you on into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but, but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Amen. Thank you. So this shows that through the Holy Spirit, we can have guidance. It says he will guide you into all truth, and he will show you things to come. So we don't have to be in the dark. We don't have to be blind of what, um, of what we are to do, because he, gives, he gave us an example. He, he gave us his sacrifice, his blood, and he gives us power through his Holy Spirit to do it. So, okay. It goes along with everything you say. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's found in Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, verse 6. 
and I'm reading. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently mm -hmm. seek him. Amen. Yes, um, he, he will reward us when we do our part and when we seek him. He, he will give us, he gives us all that we need to seek him. He gives us the tools, the example, and um, he paid for it. So, yeah, he will he'll reward us when we, when we follow through with what he said. Amen. So let's also look at with what mentality should we seek after God? With what mentality? Uh, Psalm 6, 63, 1, if we can all go there. And can I get a reader for that? Psalm 63, verse 1. With what mentality should we seek God? O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Thank you. Amen. So we are to seek after God as if we're thirsty and hungry. We know the verse, um, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. So we need to be thirsty, and that's a tr true, sincere yearning for him. And it also mentions water. I like how he mentions water because water represents the Holy Spirit in the Bible. And without the Holy Spirit, without water, we will die. So without the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. So it takes a sincere, um, it, our lives depend on it. If we don't have water, our spiritual lives will die. So we need the Holy Spirit to teach us what to do. I wanted to add too in that verse, it says early. So there's a time frame on that, meaning you give God your best and your first. You don't do your work and do all your secular matters, and at the end of the day, when you have whatever energy that's left, give God a haphazard prayer. There is, there is a putting him first, there's, or it wouldn't say early seek you. And early, not just in the day early, but probation's not going to last forever. There's going to be a closing, so we don't want to be outside the ark trying to get in when time's up. There's a deadline. Yes, you're jumping ahead. That's our, that's, oh. <laughs> we're going to go through that soon. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> no. you didn't share this with me. I'm, I'm glad you caught that. Uh, yes, we'll be going through this soon. Oh, I'm glad you noticed that. <laughs> so... We read Psalm 63, 1, mm -hmm. and I'm going to 2, and further, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise mm -hmm. thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. Mm -hmm. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with moral and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate, and meditate on thee in the night watches. Hmm. So we have to constantly dwell with Christ. We have to constantly dwell with our Father. And hmm. our duty in life is just to glorify him. Yes, amen. To bring glory and, and honor to him. And that pleases him. Mm -hmm. And by pleasing God, he opens the, do uh, the storehouses mm -hmm. of heaven. He wants us to be happy. Mm -hmm. He says, prove me now right. herewith, and I'll open the doors of heaven. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're also jumping ahead a little. <laughs> but I'm glad I didn't, I overlooked that verse. Um, we'll be looking at the lips and the hands of our actions praising God. We'll be looking at that soon. So... This is actually the next question. What is evidence uh, you are doing God's will? Because you don't just seek for something. You have to eventually find it. So after seeking and with humility and with prayer and turning from your wicked ways, that's true repentance, um, after doing that, 
you'll, you'll, find, you'll be doing God's will. And so what is evidence we'll be doing his will? So we know 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I can read this one. Seven, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So this shows that there'll be change. When, when there's a new creature, old things passing away and new things coming, that's a total transformation. Um, like the, the story of a butterfly, how it changes from a caterpillar, that is complete, total change. It looks nothing like it did before. So we know that we'll, there will be change, but what changes will, what will change when we have found him? Let's look at Psalms 10, verse 4. Psalms 10, verse 4, if I can get a reader for that. What will change when we have found him? Psalms 10, verse 4. See your hand? The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Amen. Thank you. So those who don't seek after God, it says God will not be in all his thoughts. So it's the same the other way around. If we do seek after God, God will be in all of our thoughts. And I also like how it mentions through the pride of his countenance. Remember, we looked at humility earlier, and that's like the prerequisite. So the opposite of humility is pride. And so when we haven't given up our pride and we're still trying to hold on to that, we won't want to seek after God. We, we don't have a need. We we're, have need of nothing, Laodicea. So it takes humility to even see our need. And then when we see our need and we seek him, then he will, God will be in all of our thoughts. So that's the first thing, thoughts. Another thing, uh, let's go to John 14, 15 through 17. John 14, 15 through 17. I can read this one. So it says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. So the first thing this mentions is keeping the commandments. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So we looked at the, the Bible and the example as being our standard. So And we, we said that walking is synonymous with... Um, with doing, and so keeping the cam commandments is the same as um, as our actions. That that's our actions, but then it moves to the spirit of truth, and so what what happens when you have the Holy Spirit? What what is seen in our life? Well, the fruit of the spirit. There's Matthew seven twenty that says, "Therefore, by your fruits ye shall know them." So we, we all are familiar with that verse. So when we, when, we have, when we have found God and we're doing his will, our, our thoughts will, act, will change. God will be in all of our thoughts. Our actions will praise him. We will be keeping his commandments. And the fruit of the spirit will be seen in our life. And then let's look at the third thing, John 20, 21. Let's go to John 20, 21. So if I can get a reader for John 20, 21. So, so far we've seen our, our words and our actions. What else? John chapter 20, verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Amen. So, oh, we have another hand. This is found in Proverbs uh, 16. Proverbs 16, verse 7. It says, when a man weighs, please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Mm. Wow. We just need to please God. Mm -hmm. 
And how do we please him is what you're talking about now. Doing his will. Obeying him, doing Mm -hmm. his will. If we love it, he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. So it takes it takes a love. Mm -hmm. DJ, I have a comment. Uh, When you talk about action and doing, walking in his ways, uh, if you go to Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8, and it says, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Mm -hmm. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. So there's Mm -hmm. a promise right there of action Mm -hmm. and what God will do for you. Yeah, that goes with receiving the Holy Spirit. We, God won't, um, he said, how much more, ye being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit unto you? So yes, that's, that's powerful. So that third verse we read talks about Jesus sending his disciples throughout the world and he's sending them to preach the gospel. And when you preach, that's your words. So when, you have, when you're doing God's will, your words and your thoughts and your actions will all change, and that, that will be an influence. The world will see that. Um, that reminds me of the parable of where Jesus was talking about a candle. You don't put it in a bush. You put it on a lampstick on a hill so that it can be seen. So you, this won't be a hidden experience. This will be seen in your lives, and it will overflow, and others will see it. So if there's no more comments, um, if what we say differs from what we do, that's misrepresentation of God's character. That's profession. That's professing to be a Christian, but, and it's taking the name of the Lord in vain because we know the name of the Lord is his character. So let's make sure our actions line up with what we say and Um, what we say, what we do, and what we think. So now we're going to look at some examples of Bible characters in the Bible, um, Bible characters who unhesitatingly left all to do God's will. So this is a very interactive one. Let's, besides Jesus, because we know Jesus left his crown and his throne of heaven to come and do what God had him to do and give up his life. Um, But besides Jesus, there's many characters in the Bible, and I want as, mu- and as many um, options or as many ideas, anyone who has a thought of Bible characters in the Bible. So, There's one I mentioned in my prayer when I was doing my worship mm-hmm. study this week. The theme was pleasing God, and mm-hmm. the scriptures re- replete with those that please God, what he did for them. And if we go to Hebrews 11, that particular chapter, there's quite a few characters that you're referring to, what they did and what they went through. But all of them please God. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11, verse 5. It says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because he had, he had translated him. But this is the, the portion that caught me. But before his translation, he had this testimony. Earlier, you mentioned character. Mm-hmm. Our testimony can be our character. Mm-hmm. Our testimony really is our character. He had this testimony that he pleased God. He pleased God so much that God wanted him near him. Mm-hmm. Man, to have something like that happen to Walking you or God. to me, that would be amazing. Yeah. That's our desire. Mm-hmm. So before you leave, I want to um, ask what, so you said Enoch, what did he leave to do God's will? What, what did he leave? What did he have to give up? The world. Yes, the world. He gave okay. up the world. Yeah. So I, not just I don't want just the Bible characters, but also what they gave up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's a good example. Enoch, he literally walked with God. He was living God, the life that God wanted him to live. Okay, I see a lot of hands. Yeah. So 
Um, Zacchaeus, because didn't Zacchaeus give up his mm -hmm. old life of riches and luxury just to follow God after he found out he was running, mm -hmm. or after? Yeah, he, he realized his, his sin. I, I would say um, Ruth, she mm -hmm. had an opportunity to go back um, as a Moabitess to her country, an mm -hmm. idolatrous nation, but she chose to follow her mother-in-law, I think not just because she loved her, but also because of the truth that mm -hmm. she loved as well. Yeah, I think that's a great example because she left her whole lifestyle behind, the whole lifestyle of a heathen, so yeah, she, she gave up a lot. Um, I would say the woman with the two mites. Mm -hmm. Um, she was poor, and even though she only gave, you know, two mites, Jesus said that she gave the most, because that was her all, you know. Yeah, she gave, that's an important one, because she didn't just give her money, she gave her heart with that. It's the percent, it's the percent of your heart you give with it. It's not the, the money, because people had more money, but it's the, it's the heart. Yes. Um, during my personal worship, I was reading about, uh, King Josiah, and I'm going to read some scriptures in 2 Kings chapter 23, beginning with verse number 24, and it says, moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book of Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. And like unto him, there was no king before him that turned to the Lord with all their heart and with all their soul and with all his might, according to all of the law of Moses, neither after him arose there any like him. So when we look at like um, Josiah, what did he do that a lot of the other ones did not do? Well, First of all, he turned from the sensual pleasures of the world, mm -hmm. and that was a problem with most of the kings. They did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and when you read um, first, and, uh, first and Second Kings, you'll read over and over, this king did wickedly in the sight of the Lord, and this king did wickedly in the sight of the Lord. So he turned away from all of that stuff. He looked at the breach that was in the temple, and he... He was a repair of the breach. Wow, that's interesting you mentioned that. We were talking about that this morning, too. And that's big when you're leading a whole nation, when you're the king and you're doing God's will, you have a big influence. And even if we aren't the kings in here or the queens, let's make sure our influence can be a big, it could be a stumbling block or it could be an encouragement to others. So let's make sure our influence is pleases God. So... Yeah, these are all great examples, um, and if there's no more, okay, I don't see any more. Uh, I had a comment oh. regarding the woman of the two mites. So not only did she give uh, everything that she had, she willingly gave everything that she had, mm -hmm. because anything that you give to God doesn't really matter unless you gave it willingly. Mm -hmm. Because um, oftentimes we read in the Bible like of the, uh, the rich young ruler. Mm -hmm. He did make sacrifices. He did keep the Ten Commandments, but he did it thinking... This is going to earn me a place in heaven, mm -hmm. not thinking, how can I consecrate my own life to God? Which mm -hmm. is why when Jesus did ask him to do something that did cause sacrifice, he left with a heavy heart. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of the verse, God loveth a cheerful giver. That's a, yeah, that's an important one. If there's no, if our heart isn't with it, it's not worth it, yeah. Um, also, as we were in the book of Hebrews, um, um, also in Hebrews 11, uh, verse 24 and, and 20, yeah, 24 and 27, and we see, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And verse 27 by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured us seeing him who is invisible. Amen. Yes, Moses. Um, yeah, we don't want to forget about him. He left. He could have been Pharaoh. He left his whole old life behind, just like Ruth. He left his lifestyle to do what pleased God and be in the wilderness to become a shepherd. 
and he didn't know that God was had a plan for him to prepare him to lead Israel out of Egypt. So yeah, that's that's important. So we have all these great people. We saw Ruth, the woman with the two white uh, with the two mites. We saw uh, oh, who was it? Josiah, King Josiah, uh, Enoch. All these great people. Let's look at what their reward was. What are the reward of those who left all and surrendered all to seek God's will? Well, this one, when I was looking for verses, there was no shortage, and so there was a, it was an overwhelmingly um, large amount of promises that God gives. So let's go to Mark 10, 20, 29 through 30. Mark 10, 29 through 30, if I can get a reader for this. What was the reward of those who surrendered all to seek God? Mark 10, 29 through 30. Mark 10, 29 and 30 says, And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that had left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands with persecution, and in the world to come, eternal life. So this is a great promise. God doesn't only um, say that he says you shall receive a hundredfold now in this time and eternal life. He's going to, just like Job, that's when I forgot Job, he left, um, he, he lost everything and God restored a hundredfold. He, he lost his children. He had more children. He lost lands. He gained all that back a hundredfold in this time and eternal life in the world to come. So that's a great promise. Another one, Psalms 37, 25. I, I wanted to make a comment oh, too. Yes. Um, if we keep in mind that we're merely pilgrims on this earth passing through, the attachments of the world, I, I think, would be uh, in its proper order. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we occupy till he comes, but we won't allow those attachments to separate us uh, from, from, from God. And um, it seems like we think uh, these things are such a big give up, but really we have the better end of the deal, so to speak. What are we really giving up? Um, filthy rags, our self-righteousness. Um, but he's not going to just leave us without and naked. He's going to clothe us once we take off our filthy rags. He's going to put brand new garments on, and that's Christ's righteousness. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a wonderful trade. And uh, I think of the, um, the saying, heaven was cheap enough. Mm -hmm. So it, it might feel like a lot now, but in the bigger scope of thing of eternal, everlasting life, mm -hmm. that's why we have to keep that at the forefront of our mind, of keeping your eyes on the prize and staying focused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we shouldn't let the what God meant to be rewards for us in uh, in this life to overcrowd what what will give us the rewards a hundred times, a hundredfold. So yes, amen to that. Um, another one, Psalms thirty-seven twenty-five. I have been young and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. So God won't forsake us. He will come through if we follow through with. What he, his will for us, he will follow through with um, his rewarding us. Uh, another one, 2 Timothy 2.12. This is an important one. 2 Timothy 2.12, if I can get a reader for this. 2 Timothy 2.12. This, this is the reward of those who surrendered all to seek God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Amen. So this mentions suffering. We, there's, it might be hard to give up our, our will and our lives, but once we do that little bit, God will, will, God will give us a, a seat in his throne. We will reign with him forever in heaven. Um, but then it also says... 
if we deny him, he will also deny us. So this, this is, um, this shows that there's a big, this is a big topic. If we, if we don't follow through with our end of the deal, he can't re reward us if we aren't faithful. So let's look at what will happen if we don't choose God's will. So let's turn to Proverbs 1.28. Proverbs 1.28. Proverbs is probably my favorite book in the Bible. When I was reading through it, there's so much wisdom, and we could read almost through the whole chapter, but Proverbs 1.28 is, is very fitting. Um, what will happen if we don't choose God's will? Oh, before we move on to this, um, back to what will be the reward of those who surrendered all to seek God. Uh, there's a verse in Matthew 6, 23 that says, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things will be added unto you. So he will give us the gifts and the rewards after we seek first the kingdom. So we have to have our priorities in line and know that we seek him first and then everything will be added. So in Proverbs 1, 28, if I can have someone read, um, Proverbs 128. Oh. Proverbs 128 says, Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Oh, and then the next verse also. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Oh, I guess it's the next one also. <laughs> they, would none, they would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Amen. So this, this shows that there's a cutoff. There's a deadline. God's mercy, he's very merciful, but there comes a point in time where his wrath will be poured out without mixture. If we hate his knowledge and grieve the Holy Spirit, uh, hate his knowledge, his reproof, um, God chasteneth who he loveth. And so when we despise that, that's, that's grieving him away. Uh, and it even says, they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. So even those who in the end um, want to seek him, they won't find him. It's the mercy is over. God, God's done pleading. So this is a very solemn thought. I also like in also Proverbs 1, two verses before that, Proverbs 1, 26. It says, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. So that's, that's a solemn message. God mocking and laughing at us when we are fearful. And um, if we haven't, if we haven't um, sought to do his will. So this is an important um, message. Let's, not, let's make sure we're not like King Agrippa, an almost Christian, a halfway, halfway saved almost saved, like just there. He was almost persuaded, but he didn't fully commit to seeking God's will. He didn't want to have to give up his will. So my appeal to you guys is that we would humbly seek to know God's will and to give up our own, our, our selfishness, our filthy rags, and to seek, seek God's will and his righteousness. And um, even if we don't understand why he's doing certain things, let's trust him as did Abraham and um, trust his perfect plan and he will follow through. Let us close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we have learned a lot today. We pray that you would give us strength through your Holy Spirit to do these things we have learned and apply this to our lives. Help us as we strive to um, understand what you would have us to do through your commandments and your spirit in Jesus' life. Help us to know what you would have us to do and to not do our own will, but to trust you and guide us this Sabbath and help us to continually keep this in our minds. In Jesus' name, amen.